Hello, it's Melinda from Alexis and Melinda's Art Space. How are you all going? So I'm coming on with a, another challenge page today from the Follow the Rainbow Challenge hosted by Creative Warriors, Warriors which is a Facebook group run by Michelle Grant. Try saying that 10 times. Um, so this, it's a monochromatic challenge. So you're given a prompt of each color of the rainbow and your page should be that color plus black and white. A little bit of black and white, but yeah, well... I don't know what a little is. Um, so I'm just coding my uh, art journal page um, with some clear gesso to start with. This paper in this journal is not the best. It's very absorbent. So I wanted to put like a barrier on my page. And the reason I chose clear is this paper is sort of a cream color. Um, so I wanted to preserve that color. And the clear gesso stops my paints and stuff going through the next page. So Michelle Grant designs um, a lot of digital image packs I believe they're called um, basically you buy them online and you can print them as many times as you like and use them as many times as you like in your artwork you can print them different sizes um, in most packs they come in different sizes this is the A4 version um, like on a landscape so it's quite a large image um, and I've just printed this at home on my laser printer so just gluing that down with some matte uh, matte medium matte gel medium from Little Birdie, I'm trying to use up bits and pieces. So that Little Birdie is, um, I actually opened a new container, but it's a lot thicker than even being commercially sealed. I admit it's a few years old, shush. Um, <laughs> trying to use up bits and pieces. So it's a bit thicker than it usually is. So I tend to use a bit more than I should. That's what I'm going to try to spell out. And it's drying a bit more glossy than matte than it should. So I put some more clear gesso over the top. I should have just stuck the image down first and clear gessoed after, but you know what? I don't think of things like that, do I? So my page has got lots of clear gesso on it. If I just left it, the gel medium and the clear gesso in different parts would have reacted differently to the paint and the ink um, that I'm going to put on the page later. So it gives you a like a level playing field when you coat your page with gesso. Um, so I found some magazine pages in my scrap box. These are orange pages with black writing on them. I love magazines that have the matte pages, not the glossy pages. I love glossy magazines too for a different purpose. But I love using this coloured text in different projects. And these were some strips I'd cut up for a class. These were the leftovers. So diving in and using up bits and pieces. Sort of got a bits and pieces box on my desk of sort of pattern paper. And then I've got one of sort of focal images and stuff. And just dive in there first before I go and try to look for something else. So using the matte gel medium to stick them down with as well. So I'm sort of working in three cluster areas. So sort of across the bottom, which turns sort of into one. And then in that top right hand corner. Um, so now I'm adding some paint. So I believe I used Dina Wakely Cheddar. I've got them still sitting on my desk. Um, and just applying them with a spatula, just sort of. I don't know. I'd had no real idea of what I wanted to do, except I loved the the lines coming out of her eyes, and I knew I wanted to do something with them. I won't give it away yet. Well, you've probably seen the picture already. Gives it away. So the next color I'm using is Distress Paint Wild Honey, and I also use where is it? That one, Dina Wakely um, Sedona. So they're the three orange colors I chose. Now I mix up all my acrylic paints all the time. They're all acrylic. They all work well together. I go by colour of what colour works with my project and not necessarily stay within the same brand. So that's a good tip. Sort your paint colours by colour, not by um, brand, and then you can pick whatever colour you like. So now I'm going in with some stenciling. I'm using this leaf stencil, sort of like an arrow. Why? I have no idea. It was on the top of my pile and it looked good. So just putting some of the darker orange, the Sedona, through the stencil with a makeup sponge. Didn't stand out as much as I'd like it to, but I'll do something in a minute. Um, and now I'm putting down some washi tape. So I'm on a mission to use up washi tape as well. Mission to use up everything. Good good thing for an art journaler. Um, especially washi tape because I've had to throw a few rolls out that are several years old and just are not good anymore. So this was the only roll of only orange washi tape I found in my entire stash. And I have, um, yeah, quite a few rolls. So... As I said, this is a monochromatic challenge. So the challenge is orange plus one color, plus, sorry, orange is one color plus black and white. So finding things that are only orange, like just orange pattern papers or just orange washi, ta washi tape, washi tape with no other colors on them is quite challenging. But 
I really like how this page turned out. I had fun. Fun is the best part of art journaling. I usually don't care what the end result is, if I like the page, if I don't like the page. So now I'm adding some archival inks and I've put those away so I don't know which ones I've got. I think one was Campfire, um, a Tim Holtz Campfire, and then the other one's just like an orangey colour. Um, crackling Campfire, I think the ready one, ready orange one is. So just adding that through another one of my stencils um, with a blending brush just to add some more lighter texture in the background and also to bring some of the background over onto the face. So I've done that in a few spots as well. Apologise for my big head getting in the way. Long time viewers know and you'll hear it a lot before. I had low vision, I'm not allowed to drive a car. That's how stinky my vision is. And sometimes when I'm outlining shapes like this, I have to be quite close to my book to be able to effectively get the line in the right place. Blunt way of putting it. Um, even with my glasses on, I struggle. So I'm trying so hard to keep my head out of shot. I should brush my hair before I do videos. That's disgusting hair there. Um, so I apologise. I'm trying to film from different angles and try different things. And yeah, it's not really working. Um... And I'm struggling with this Posca paint pen too. I end up throwing this in my um, box of empties because it, it it was not working properly. It was just running out and it was just, it needed to go in the rubbish bin. Um, it did enough of a job to get the paint, um, the, get the colours around the stencils. So it lasted for the book, but yeah. Um, I go through a lot of paint pens and I sort of keep them, I'm terrible, I keep them till the last second before they run out. I persist with them like here, um, re-pumping them up and down, shaking them, giving them a rest. I'm terrible. I just should bite the bullet when it starts playing up and stop stressing over it and put it in the bin. But oh well. Now I grab a thicker Posca paint pen, I believe this is the 5M one. I believe the other one I had was a 1M and just doing some dots on the page just to um, I felt there was a lot of black in the image but there wasn't black in other parts of the page so I decided to bring the black out is the eyes yes I saw this image and I thought oh, I'm gonna do something with extending those lines out and I may have stolen that idea from Michelle Grant I vaguely remember her doing the live many moons ago maybe doing the same thing so I acknowledge it if that is the case if not, could have been my idea, I don't know. <laughs> Sounded like a good idea at the time. <laughs> so again, that paint pen. Oh, I have to go to Officeworks and get some more paint pens. Um, I usually keep spares of each size and each colour here, but I've been doing lots of line work and lots of arty lately. And my spare stash is getting quite low. Then I grabbed an orange paint pen and I'm just putting some paint pen into her eyes there and a little bit on her face. I wanted her face still to be white. So just putting in some orange pupils, making her eyebrows orange and putting a bit down her nose, just sort of where the black of the, the image was, just to give it a tint of colour. And then I decided to put some orange lines between my black lines as well, just to add that second colour in and tie it all together. So I was having so much fun doing this. I had a movie on my laptop and I was sitting there and just in the groove and watching and playing. Then I decided to add a bit of paint pen in just a couple of little spots that looked a bit white and to bring that colour in as well. When you're using many shades of the one colour, it gets very interesting. So I am denied about a title. So with some of Michelle's um, earlier, uh, Michelle Grant's earlier um, image sets, you got to collage sheet of words as well. I haven't purchased any of your recent ones again, trying to use up my old stuff. So I'm determined not to buy any new ones till I use the ones up I've got. Yeah. So I am an R and procrastinate so much with this title. <laughs> Where to stick it? How to cut it up? It was absolutely dreadful. I was being so indecisive. So I end up putting it on the left side. Just because that white, that right side has so much black in the face and it sort of felt balanced. Um, so sticking the, when I print the Michelle Grant designs uh, images, um, I print them onto about 160 GSM cardstock or paper, which is more like paper. It's a bit heavier than 80 GSM, which is what you print your um, like normal printing on. So I have to use a good glue to glue them down. So just um, going around with um, 
a Uniball eye pen, I think that one is, around the letters to make them stand out. Thought I could get a thought I could get through a video without yawning. Here's some close-up pictures at the end. And thank you so much for watching. And I've only got five more colours to do. Bye for now.